Good morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. Thank you once again for joining us on this beautiful Sunday morning. We come to give God praise, honor, and glory for all that he has done. We pray that you will click that share button and start a watch party with your family and friends. Our scripture will come from Psalm 9, 1 through 2. And this scripture is for the choir director. It says, I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all the marvelous things you have done. I will be filled with joy because of you. I will sing praises to your name most high. Now, since I have been retired, I have been a lot doing a lot more reading. And in one of my devotions this week, it came from Pastor Bartholomew Orr of the Brown Baptist Church in South Haven, Mississippi. And he asked a question to all of the worship leaders and praise and worship leaders. And his question was, do you make an all out concerted effort to tell God thank you? And he says, no, you don't need a degree in music. You just need a degree in gratitude. And he said, you don't even have to carry a tune. Or just you just have to carry some memories of who God is and what God has done for you. And you know, these words spoke volumes to me. When I just let my mind go back to just a few months ago, when I think of how God brought me through the roughest times of my life, I can't help but to praise God and say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Because it is because of God that I am standing here right now today because God kept me through all of my sickness. So if you are listening to me this morning and God spared your life last night, tell God thank you. If you're listening to me and you have not been exposed to COVID-19, tell God thank you because you know it wasn't the mask or the social distancing that kept us from getting COVID-19, but it was God. If you're listening to me and God has kept you from losing your mind with everything that's going on in this world, tell God thank you. So God, we come to you this morning just to say thank you. Thank you, God, for just being God. God, we come with an attitude of gratitude. Thanking you for all that what you have done in our lives, God. Thanking you, God, because we know that there is no other God like you. God, we constantly say thank you. I constantly thank you. You constantly bless me. constantly thank you for blessing me. You turned my world around. In you joy I found. That's why I constantly
for blessing me. For blessing me. For blessing me. Father God in heaven, it's in the name of Jesus the Christ we come, Lord. We thank you for another privilege, another chance, another opportunity. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us and keeping us. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come again in this land, Father God, just to lift up your name. God, we thank you for constantly, constantly blessing us. And Lord, we constantly thank you. And we honor your name and we praise you, Father God, for who you are, for what you do and the way you do things. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us today. Forgive us for our sins. Mold and shape our lives. Bless us, Father God, that your word, Father God, will fall on good soil. Bless us as we go forward in your word today. Bless our lives, Father God, that we will run and tell other men, women, boys, and girls about Jesus the Christ, the one who makes all things well. Now, Lord, we ask you to keep the glory. All the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Thank, you, Lord. thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. We ought to constantly, constantly, regularly <laughs> praise him and thank him for who he is and what he has already done. We thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us one more again, for allowing us to be on this land of the dying, headed for the land of the living. Thank God for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before him one more again. And I'm glad about it. I'm glad that the Lord has blessed us one more time to come before him and to glorify his holy name. I'm going to call your attention again to Psalm number 30, Psalm number 30, Psalm number 30, Psalm number 30. Call your attention to Psalm number 30 one more time. <clears throat> Last week we dealt with Psalm number 30, verses 1 through 5. This week we're going to deal with Psalm number 30, verses 6 through 10. Psalm number 30, verses 6 through 10 is where we will be on today. Let me thank our visitors and our friends for joining us here at the New Beginning Church at our re remote location. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for all that you do with our church and for our church. We live in some different times now and, and God is still blessing us regardless of our location and regardless of where we're broadcasting. Hallelujah. Psalm number 30 verses 6 through 10. <clears throat> Psalm number 30, verses 6 through 10. When you found it, you will discover these words. Now in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by your favor, you have made my mountain stand strong. You hid, my, you hid your face, and I was troubled. I cried out to you, O Lord. And to the Lord I made my supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it declare your truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Lord, be my helper. Lord, be my helper. I want to talk about, Lord, be my helper. Lord, be my helper. Oftentimes, you watch the animal kingdom. You will find animals living their lives as they do every day. And many times, after watching the animal kingdom broadcast, 
I began to look at the Amor kingdom a totally different way. When, when I look at the animal kingdom, I always see one group of animals bullying other animals. And in one episode, there was, there, there, there was, there was a tiger who grabbed hold of some small lion clubs. This tiger grabbed these clubs, cubs, and just took them and beat them from one end of the property to the other. This tiger was excited. This tiger was boasting. This tiger strutted away from the crowd after he had beat these little lion cubs. But all of a sudden, the lion showed up. All of a sudden, the lion showed up and the lion saw this tiger messing with his cubs and he grabbed that tiger, ripped him to pieces, grabbed him by his neck, ripped him to, tr to threads. This lion told this tiger apart. This lion, as the tiger felt like it was at ease, the lion, the lion grabbed him by his neck, shattered him to pieces, and then he strutted away with his cubs. That's where we find ourselves today in Psalm number 30. <clears throat> Last week I told you that favor lasts for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. David is writing this particular psalm and he's writing, the, uh, the theologians believe that he writes it right after he goes through some grave illness. Mm -hmm. He writes this song after God has delivered him from his sickness. He writes this song after God has, has blessed him to get up, walk around, and speak again. He goes through verses 1 through 5, and, and David says in Psalm number 30, 1 through 5, David talks about how he extolled God, how he elevates God. He elevates God to a point of praise. He raises God. And he raises the people's attention to who God is and what God has done. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> David says, oh, Lord, my God, I cried unto you and you healed me. He says, he says, Lord, uh, you, you cleared me from the grave. Mm -hmm. Here David is saying that, that the Lord God, as we know him, the self-existing God, the Lord God, he has blessed David to get up off his sickbed. He says, I sing praises unto God. And then he invites the people to come and sing praises unto God with them. Amen. Let me tell you, David got it right. David got it right. He, he sung praises unto the magnificent God. He sings praises to the self-existing God. He sings praises to the God who has healed him. Yes. And then he invites other people. Mm -hmm. He invites other people to join in with him and sing in praises unto the Lord. He gives thanks unto get to him. He, he remembers his holy name. And then in verse number five, he says some of your favorite passages of scripture, some of your favorite quotes. In the verse number five, he says, for his anger is but for a moment. Yes. His favor is for a life. It is for a lifetime. And here it is, here it is. He says, and weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. 
David realizes in verses 1 and one through 5 that he has the favor of God on his life. He realizes that he, he's able to be blessed by God for a lifetime because God's favor is with him. But if you look at verse number 6, and you look at the transition from verse number 5 to verse number 6, something happens to David. David gets in his flesh. David gets to a point where he, he's carefree. It's, 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 it's evident that we, we as a people oftentimes find ourselves in blessed moments. Mm -hmm. And in the blessings of the moment, pride sneaks in. Oh, Lord. It, says, it says here, it says in verse number five that God's anger exists for a moment. God won't be mad at you forever. God's anger will not reside with you forever. You mess up. God is angry with you. But he says that the favor of the Lord exists for a lifestyle. If we are converted, if we are walking in the Lord, God's favor will exist with us for a lifetime. But the transition from verse number five to verse number six becomes detrimental to David. Why does it become death detrimental? Because he says, now my prosperity, I said I should never be moved. Mm -hmm. This is the voice. This is the attitude of one who has things going well for him. This is a carefree attitude. This is a careless attitude. This is a careless attitude of taking it easy. This is an attitude of self-sufficiency. It's an attitude of self-assurance. David gets just like some of us get at times. When God has blessed us, and we know God has blessed us, we admit that God has blessed us. We admit that God has given us favor. We admit that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, we would have been dead and gone. That's what David confessed right here in Psalm number 30. He confesses that because of God's favor, I am who I am. Because of God's favor, I'm going to have God's favor for a lifetime. But the transition from verse number five to verse number six creates a problem. The problem here is pride. The problem here is arrogancy. The problem here is David claims himself to be self-assured and self-sufficient. He says, now my prosperity, I said. Now my prosperity, I said, shall never be moved. He says, whatever I have now, I'm going to keep having. David has an attitude of an unconverted person. But let me just tell you, my dears, this attitude of one who has not been converted can be the temptation of all of us who are born again. This attitude of one who has not been saved can become the temptation of all of us who are saved. This attitude of arrogance, this attitude of self-sufficiency, this attitude of self-assurance, this attitude of carelessness, mm -hmm. this attitude of ease can sneak up on yeah. all of us. Be careful, my dears. Be careful, my brothers and my sisters. Be careful that when God has blessed you, you keep realizing that it's God who has blessed you. Yeah. Don't think you've done it on your own. Don't think you've come this far. We, we used to sing a song back home. We've come this far by leaning on the Lord. Yes. You're only who you are because God has made you that. You're only who you are because God has taken you there. Yes. You're only where you are because God is keeping you there. Don't get to a point where you get beside yourself. Amen. David says, "My, I've come to the conclusion that my prosperity will never be moved. <laughs> My next point to you today is you don't, don't get to the point where you think you can't get on God's bad side. Right. Don't, don't get to the point because God has, has given you favor and you know that favor lasts for a lifetime. Don't get to the point that you think you can say anything, that you can do anything, you can act any kind of way. Don't you dare get to the point where you think you can walk any kind of way, talk to folk any kind of way, treat people any kind of way. It's a Security that's insecure. Wow. 
It is insecurity when we think that we can do things and, and we are secure in our blessings and, and our 401k is sitting fine. God can wipe it out. Don't think, don't think that your bank account can keep it stay there and you will always be on the mountaintop and you can't be moved. Don't think your job is secure because no job is secure. Even the president's job is not secure. It is the attitude of arrogance. It is the attitude of self-righteousness. It is the attitude of self-assurance. Just because you got a degree, just because you got several of them, just because you got money, just because you got the house, don't let the house, the money, nor your prosperity thank you that you are, make you think you're more than who you are. Don't get comfortable in your prosperity. Don't get comfortable in your success. Don't get comfortable even in your healing if you've been healed as David has been here, don't get comfortable in it. Because you have to keep realizing over and over and over again, if you're healed, God is the one that healed you. Don't get comfortable in your faith. Don't brag about how much faith you have because the faith that you have is not your own. Romans says, Romans says that God has given to every man a measure of faith. And because God has given you a measure of faith, you can't brag about it because it doesn't belong to you. It comes from God Almighty. Don't get comfortable in your church. <laughs> Certainly we can't get comfortable in our churches today. Because many of us, many of us are outside of the church. Many of us are not in the church. We can't get comfortable in our church. We can't get comfortable in our church attendance. Because our church attendance has bottomed out now. We can't get comfortable in our church attendance because we can't depend on our church attendance from one day to the other. No, we can't get comfortable with the pastor we have. Because he is just a mortal man. We can't get comfortable in our messages. We can't even get comfortable in our salvation. We ought not be comfortable in our salvation because our salvation ought to push us to sanctification. Yes. We can't get comfortable in our salvation because even the salvation we have did not come from us. It came from the Lord. I'm just trying to tell you the problem that David had. <laughs> David had a problem with arrogance. David had a problem. He, he bragged about it. He says, I will not be moved. My prosperity will not be moved. I will always be who I am and where I am. But David had to come to himself. <laughs> David, David had to come to himself. Look at verse number seven. Verse number seven says, Lord... Your favor, you made, Lord, by your favor, you have made my mountain stand strong. Yes. You see, in verse number six, David got beside himself, but in verse number seven, he knew where to run. My next point to you today is you need to know where to run. Mm -hmm. When you get beside of yourself, you need to understand that God is still God and God is still on the throne. Some people get comfortable in their, in their, in their quarantine. And in their quarantine, they, they don't show up at church even virally anymore. Mm -hmm. They don't show up in church virtually anymore. Yes. And when they do show up, the preacher's already taken his text. The, song is, the psalmist has already sung. Let me tell you, don't get comfortable in your quarantine. Yes. Don't get so comfortable until you're not excited about the Lord anymore. Don't get so comfortable until your salvation is enough. Because one of these days, we're going to stand before the throne of God. And we will give account of everything we said in this life, everything we thought in this life, and everything we did in this life. Yes. Don't get comfortable. Don't get arrogant, don't get comfortable, don't get prideful, because pride comes before the fall. David says in verse number 7, Psalm number 30, he says, Lord, by your favor, you have made my mountain stand strong. Yes, sir. When 
David talks about his mountain standing strong, remember David was a king and David had a kingdom. And because David was a king and he had a kingdom, God allowed him to prosper in his kingdom. And right in the midst of his arrogance, he had to change his attitude. He said, Lord, I didn't make my kingdom stand strong. I didn't make my mountain stand strong. Lord, it was you who made my mountain stand strong. He says, he says, God, I just had a moment there. <laughs> Lord, I just had a moment of arrogance. I, I just had a moment of self-assurance. I, I had a moment where I got beside myself. But Lord, when I came to myself, I acknowledged that by your favor, by your anointing, by who you are, Lord, you have made my mountains to stand strong. You made my kingdom to stand. You made me be able to reside on this throne, Lord, you have blessed me. Yes. And then he says, Lord, the reason why I want to let you know this is because you hid your face and I was in trouble. Yes. He, he said, Lord, Lord, you hid your face from me. Mm -hmm. And when you hid your face from me, I was in trouble. Let me tell you this morning. Right. If the Lord hid, he, if the Lord hides his face from you. Baby, you need to understand. Brother, you need to understand. Sister, you need to understand. Little girl, little boy, you need to understand. If the Lord hides his face from you, you're in trouble. Amen. It's a sad day. It's a sad day when people are in trouble with the Lord and they don't even know it. Yes. It's a sad day when people are in trouble and they don't even realize they were in trouble. He says, Lord, you hid your face from me. In other words, the Lord's presence was no longer there. And whenever the Lord's presence is not there, you are in trouble. That's right. I told the story to begin with. I told the story to begin with about these little bitty lion cubs that, that were in trouble because the tiger attacked them. As long as the lion was not present, they were in trouble. As long as the lion's face was turned a different way, they were in trouble. But let me tell you, when the lion showed up, they were in no more trouble. When the lion shows up, you in no more trouble. I want to tell you today, when the Lord shows up, when the Lord turns his face toward you, you're not in trouble any longer. David says, uh, you, you hid your face and I was in trouble. You know, when arrogance set in and, and the Lord has turned his face, the Bible says in Romans chapter 1 that the Lord will turn you over to a reprobate mind. Mm -hmm. When sin has overtaken your life, when sin has overshadowed your life, God will turn you over to a reprobate mind. That means that you don't even have the consciousness to do right. You don't even have the consciousness to confess your sin. You don't even have the wherewithal to go back to God. Thank God that God gives us another chance. Amen. He says, he says, Lord, your face was hid from me. And when you hid your face, Lord, I was in trouble. When you can tell when men don't understand the Lord. You can tell when men are in trouble and they don't know they're in trouble. When men are in trouble and they don't know they're in trouble, they will go back on what they said just four or five years ago. Mm. When men are in trouble and the Lord has turned their fa his face from them, they will go back on the same words that they say. And they say, hold me to my own words. They're in trouble and don't even know they're in trouble. Right. <laughs> when, men, when men are in trouble. When men are in trouble, they'll say stupid stuff like, I've done more for Christianity than Jesus has. Not understanding where there is no Jesus Christ, there is no Christianity. Yes. When, when, men, when men are in trouble and they don't know they're in trouble, when they think they're running their very own kingdom and they're in trouble and don't know they're in trouble, they'll say stuff like this, I am the leader and I can do what I want to do. All right. It's when they're in trouble. <laughs> When they are in trouble, men, when men are in trouble and don't know that they are in trouble, they'll take mamas away from their children and children away from their parents because they are, they are the leaders and they are in trouble and don't know they're in trouble. Yes. God turns his face away. And whenever God turns his face away, we're in trouble. 
Whenever God does not give us his presence and does not make his presence known, we are in trouble. I'm telling you, today in the United States of America, we are in trouble. It's a sad day when we don't know we're in trouble. It's a sad day when God has hid his face from us and we don't realize that we are in trouble. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. The whole world is in trouble. The whole world is in trouble. The whole world is in trouble. The report came out this week that Australia has gotten its COVID-19 cases down to zero. Oh, Australia has gotten its cases down to zero. And here we are in the United States of America, hmm. the great superpower of the world. The United States of America, we're still fighting over wearing masks. Yeah. We're still struggling with three, to four, five, six feet away from each other. We're still struggling with quarantine. We're still struggling with not partying. We are the superpower of the world. We are the intelligent folk in the world. And we still having elevated cases every day. Mm -hmm. God, face has been hidden from the United States of America. David had sense enough. In verse number eight, he says, I cried out to you, O Lord, and to the Lord I made my supplication. The problem with these great United States of America and every preacher all over the globe ought to be telling men, women, and boys and girls what the real problem is. The real problem is number one, God has hid his face because of our arrogance, mm -hmm. because of our self-assurance. And the next problem is that men will not pray. Mm -hmm. Men will not confess. Men will not turn from their evil ways. Men will not call and humble themselves before the almighty God. Don't stop growing in the Lord. When you stop growing in the Lord, you will get to a point in your life where you will not cry out to him. We need to be crying out to the Lord. We need to be calling on the Lord. We ought to know that we're in trouble, and when we're in trouble, we ought to run to the Lord. Run to him. We ought to be calling house vigils. We, we ought to be calling house prayers. We, we ought to be calling community prayers. We ought to be giving away food, but we ought to be praying also. David says, I cried out to you, O Lord, and to the Lord I made my supplications. Mm -hmm. He says, he says, I cried out to you, O Lord. First of all, he cries out to the Lord, and he's telling the Lord, Lord, I'm crying out to you. Yes. Lord, I cried out to you. Lord, I, I, I've turned my face toward you, even though your face was turned away from me. Lord, I'm turning my face toward you. I'm turning my heart toward you, Lord. Because I know that you're the only one who can help us now. Yes. Says to us that we need to turn our face toward the Lord. We ought to, we ought to turn to the Lord. And this, this word Lord is the self-existing God. Mm -hmm. Yahweh himself, the champion God, the God who blessed us, the Lord who has healed us. We ought to turn our face toward him and call on him. Yes. Problem is the Lord just keeps right on blessing us and we take it for granted. The Lord keeps making a way and we take it for granted. The Lord keeps doing things over and over again for us and we take it for granted. Let me tell you, we better call on the Lord. David says, I cried out to him. And he didn't say he cried out to Buddha. He cried out to the Lord. He didn't say he cried out to Muhammad. He cried out to the Lord. He didn't say he cried out to Confucius or Aristotle. He cried out to the Lord. It says here that we ought to know who to cry out to. We ought to cry out to that great God, the God himself, the God that was in existence before there was an existence. The, the Lord God who existed in eternity past and will exist in eternity future, and he exists right now. Yes, David, David says to us today that I cried out to that self-existing God. Mm -hmm. We ought to know who to cry out to. It says, I cried out to him, and I made my supplication known to that God. 
Supplication mean that, that he didn't get down there and holler, Lord, I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. He didn't call on him like that. He supplicated. He 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 dropped down. He he bent himself. He fell prostrate. He labored before the Lord in prayer. We need to labor before the Lord in prayer. We just can't. We just can't have a prayer, a prayer meeting, and just forget about praying. We need to be praying unto the Lord until it takes us down to the very, very last level of our lives. We need to call on the Lord until our innermost bowels are, are supplicating unto him. We got to call out unto the Lord. Call out unto the Lord until we pray like Jesus prayed where, where blood flowed like great, great drops of blood. Got to cry out to the Lord. Got to cry out to the Lord. And then in verse number nine, he, he begins not only to supplicate before the Lord, but he began to state his case before the Lord. He began to plead his case right before the Lord. He began to plead his case before the Lord. We need to start pleading our cases before the Lord. He says in verse number nine, what profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? It's, it, when, when what will profit it? Will the dust Praise you? Will it declare your truth? He's pleading his case now. He's saying, Lord, don't let me die. Lord, don't kill me off. Lord, don't let me suffer. Lord, deliver me. Lord, redeem me. Lord, lift me up again as you've done before. Because, Lord, I just want to let you know, I'm going to ask you a question. What profit do you have? <laughs> how, do, how, does it get, how does it help your relationship with me? How does it help my relationship with you? How does it help for you to be praised, Lord, if my blood is down, down in the ground, if my blood is in the pit? He's, he's telling God, God, you, you blessed me once. You blessed me twice. You blessed me several times. In verses number one through five, he reminds the Lord that you kept me from the pit. In other words, Lord, you kept me from dying. He was on his deathbed, but God gave him another chance. Somebody ought to be able to testify today that I was on my way out of here, but God gave me another chance. Wow. I'm reminded an Indianola, Mississippi young man walks up to me. He thought I was involved with some devilish with him, with, with his family member. He walks up to me and put a gun up to my head. Mm. He pulls the trigger and it does not fire. Wow. And if you know anything about guns... Revolvers don't jam, mm. but God did it so I can stand and tell the story today. He stands up to me, he pulls the trigger, and the gun jams right there mm. on the corner of, of Curtis Street and Gary Road, right in front of Johnny Mac's store. He pulls the trigger, and the gun jams. Mm. This time I wasn't guilty, <laughs> and the Lord saved me. Amen. The Lord spared me. The Lord kept my blood from the ground. He kept my body from the grave. Yes. Years later, I went back home to preach at a church. And lo and behold, the young man who pulled the trigger is doing a quartet back home. If you don't know what a quartet means, ask somebody from the country. They were singing. He's singing. He's leading a quartet back home. He walked up to me in that service that night. And he said, man, please forgive me. I found out that you were not the one involved. Wow. Let me tell you, it's because of God right. that my body didn't go down in the grave. It's because of God yes. that my blood wasn't crying out from the pit. Right. David asked the question, God, what profit do you have? Lord, how does it benefit you or me, Lord? How does it benefit the people? I'm telling you, sometime you need to plead your case before the Lord. David says, what profit is there in my blood when it goes down to the pit? Then he asks the question, now, will dust praise you? What he's saying here is, Lord, I will praise you. Lord, I will give you the glory. Now, I know, Lord, you know that the dust cannot praise you. 
I know that you know, Lord, the ground cannot praise you. I know that you know, Lord, that, that the dust will not praise you. But, Lord, if you give me another chance, I will praise you. The Lord gave somebody another chance this morning. Somebody should have been wiped out last night. You ought to praise him this morning. He said, will the dust praise you? Will the dust declare your truth? Lord, I will stand and I will tell mankind that you are the great God. You are the God that keeps us. You're the God that blesses us. Lord, I will not only praise you, but I will proclaim your goodness before men. He said, I will proclaim. I will proclaim. I will declare your goodness before men. Let me tell you, if God has brought you out, if God has watched over you, <laughs> If God has blessed you in time of sickness, in time of storm, you better praise him. Amen. You better thank him. You ought, to, you ought to open your mouth. I don't care how much of an introvert you are. When, when the ball goes through the field goal, when the ball goes into the end zone, it doesn't matter how much of an introvert most guys are. They are praising in the midst of the game. Let me tell you, what does God do for you? that will cause you to praise him. You better praise him right now because he's kept you alive. You better praise him right now because he woke you up this morning. You better honor him because he's God Almighty and he keeps right on blessing you. Thank you, Lord. you ought to honor him and you ought to tell men of his truth. Mm -hmm. Finally, in verse number 10, Psalm number 30, verse 10, he continues to contact God. He continues to pray. He continues to praise. He continues to proclaim. He says, Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Lord, be my helper. <laughs> he said, Lord, hear me. Lord, if you will, hear me, please. <laughs> Lord, if, if you're not too busy, will you hear me? It reminds me of Elijah on Mount Carmel, where there were 850 false prophets from Baal, and they were calling on Baal. From the morning to the noon day, they called on Baal. Mm -hmm. Elijah began to make fun of them. He said, well, you ought to call him a little louder, for he may not be able to hear you. And then he said, you ought to call him a little longer because he may be on a long journey and he can't get back to you. What Elijah was saying, you are serving a dead God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The old folk back home used to say it like this. I wouldn't have religion that I couldn't feel sometimes. Some people will tell you there's nothing in a feeling. Some people will tell you, you don't have to feel him. But I want to tell you today, I can feel him moving on the altar of my heart. And, and I thank him for another privilege. I praise him for another chance. And Lord, have mercy on me. Yeah. Have mercy on me because I'm not fit. Have mercy on me because I, I know that you're the one who can give me mercy. Have mercy on me, Lord, because I'm a wretch undone. Have mercy on me, Lord, because I keep messing up. Have mercy on me because I keep doing the same old sins over and over again. Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me because I don't deserve it. Have mercy on me because, because I keep messing up. Have mercy on me because I am not fit to have your mercy. Mm -hmm. You see, mercy is when you get something good from God and you don't deserve it. I want to just announce this morning, I don't deserve to be here, but God has given me another chance and I'm glad about it. <laughs> he has given me another opportunity and I'm going to praise him for it. Lord, have mercy on me. God, have mercy on me. The final part of his prayer in verse number 10, he says, Lord, be my helper. Lord, 
be my helper. He's still talking to this self-existing God. He, he's still calling and pleading his case before God. Let me tell you, you ought to praise him and you ought to usher in other folk to praise him. You ought to honor him. You ought to convince other folk to honor him. You ought to live a life before people that will make them want to know who God is and when they get to know him, you ought to usher them in and make sure that they honor him also. He yes. says, have mercy on me, Lord. Be my helper. His word helper in the original Hebrew means be my strength. Be my hope. Be my power. Be my recovery. Let me tell you, a bunch of us are sick. I dare tell you, all of us are sin sick. We have a sin sick nature. Our nature is to sin. Our nature loves to sin. Our nature, our nature runs to sin. But if the Lord have mercy on us, we can be spared again. If the Lord is our helper, he will make things all right for us. Because as our helper, he will be our power. As our helper, he will be our strength. As our helper, he will be our deliverance. And as our helper, he will be our recovery. Yes, we all are recovering from something. You, you may not be a drug addict, but you're recovering from something. You may not have been a prostitute, but you're recovering from something. You may not have been strung out, but you're recovering from something. You need God to be there to be your recovery plan and to bless you real good. Lord, be my helper. Lord, be my helper mean that, that God has to rescue us from ourselves. Be my helper, Lord. Lord, rescue me from my enemies. Be my helper, Lord. Lord, rest me, rescue me from my sickness. Lord, be my helper. Lord, have mercy on me. Regardless of how prosperous you are, you need the Lord. <laughs> Regardless of what you've been through, you need the Lord. Regardless of how successful you are, you need the Lord, and you need the Lord to be your helper. God made it possible, I tell you, over 2,000 years ago. He made it possible when he took his son, Jesus, our helper. He made it possible, I tell you, over 2,000 years ago. He made it possible. Lord, be our helper. Lord, help us give us strength. Lord, give us power. He heard David's cry, and he's hearing our cry. Over 2,000 years ago, he gave his son, Jesus the Christ, as a ransom for you and me. He took a tree. He took a stick. He took a cross. He marched up Calvary's here. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He died between two thieves. They hung him high. They raised him high. They dropped him low. They stressed him wide. Jesus gave up the ghost for you and for me. Yes. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. They took him off the cross. I'm telling you, the Lord will be your helper. They took him off the cross, laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because it didn't need it too long. Early that third day morning, he got up with all power. He got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. God is our helper. He's given us Jesus as our helper. Jesus the Christ. He got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. And that same Jesus is coming back again yes. to get a church without a spot or a wrinkle. Lord, be my helper. Lord, if you don't help me, there is no help I can gain. Lord, if you don't help me, I can't have help. Lord, if you don't help me, I need you to relieve me from me, rescue me from me, hide me behind Jesus. Bless him, Father God, to stand in my stead. Yes. I thank God for Jesus. Over 2,000 years ago, he became our helper. Jesus the Christ, he is our helper. We ought to be praying that prayer today. Lord, be my helper. And as our helper, he will give us strength. He will give us focus. He will give us power. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for what he has already done through Jesus the Christ. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for what the Holy Spirit means and is doing through us. Yes. Thank God for Jesus. The door of the church is open.
The invitation is extended. You need Jesus. And you can receive him right now today. The Lord will be your helper. You can receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You need him. You can't live without him. And certainly you can't get to heaven without him. You ought to come to Jesus. Just as you are. The door is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to trust Jesus as your personal Savior. You can do that right now. Just repeat after me, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Make me a new person. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you rose from the dead. Thank you for saving my soul. Will you join me in prayer now and invite Jesus into your life? Just repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life. And make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank God. We believe that if you honestly prayed that prayer, believing that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for your sin, we believe that you are born again. We believe that you're on your way to heaven when you die. But it's not enough just to be saved. You need to be sanctified. You need to be set aside. You need to be a part of this kingdom, this kingdom business. And you can do that. You can be a part. And if you have not been a part of worshiping on a regular basis, if you have not been a part of, of serving the Lord and the Lord's people, this is your moment. If you need a church home, if you need prayer, let me know by inboxing me and messaging me. And let me know that you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. If you're in Houston or out of Houston, we'll be glad to welcome you to the family of faith. I recommend this church where Jesus is the center of, a trick, center of attention and the main attraction, where Jesus is the captain of the ship. But Jesus is the one that makes the move. But Jesus is the one who's our merciful helper. If you want to join the New Beginning Church and be a part of this great happening in the Southeast Houston area, you can do so by messaging me, and inboxing me, and letting me know you want to be a part of this church. We welcome you. We thank you again for listening to our services. We thank you for being a part of our service. We thank you, Father, for giving us a privilege to be a part of this service along with you. We thank you for joining us here at the New Beginning Church, 4251 Shermar Road, Houston, Texas, 77048. And now it is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord. It is time to bless the Lord financially through giving to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can do so by three means. You can do so by three means. One, you can, you can uh, go to our cash app. Our cash tag is dollar sign NBC Souls, dollar sign NBC Souls, cash tag, uh, cash tag NBC Souls by cash app. Or you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting. Dot Jesus at yahoo.com lifting dot Jesus at yahoo.com or you can mail in uh, your offering your tithes to New Beginning Church P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas that's New Beginning Church P.O. Box 503 Missouri City Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. We'll be glad to receive your offering. And to those who are members of the New Beginning Church, thank you for con continuing to give.
continue to give a minimum of 10% of your gross income. Thank you so much for continuing to give unto the Lord your tithes and your offering. For those of you who are not members, thank you for giving to our church. And some of you have been giving by way of Cash App, by way of uh, P.O. Box. And some of you have even given by way of Zelle. Thank you so much for realizing that even in times like these, your gifts are important. You can continue to join us on Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m. for our Bible study on this Zoom station as well as this Facebook Live station. Uh, you can continue to join us for Bible study at 7.20 p.m. every Wednesday night. Thank you for joining us, and you can continue to join us at 9 a.m. on Sunday school every Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Sunday school. Our teachers will be glad to, to have you join us at 9 a.m. for Sunday school every Sunday morning. And also, thank you for joining us for this service. You can continue to join us for services every Sunday at 1045 a.m., our regular broadcast on Zoom as well as on Facebook Live. So please, ma'am, please, sir, continue to join us and be a part of our service. Uh, continue to prepare for the coming of the Lord. And he's coming back and he's coming soon. Let me just say to you, vote. Register to vote. You have one final week to register to vote. Go ahead and register to vote. This is a very critical moment. This is a very critical time. Every person. Every U.S. citizen need to be ready to vote. You need to register to vote. The second thing I want to say to you is vote. <laughs> Whatever you do, vote. Go out and vote. Go out and don't listen to the malarkey. Go out and cast your vote. Your vote is important. There are people who have died, people who've been beaten. There are people who have actually laid their lives down and given their lives for your right to vote. Please, ma'am, please, sir, go ahead and vote. The third thing I want to say is pray. Whatever you do, continue to pray that God will do great things in our nation, great things in our household, great things in our churches, in our communities. Also, I want to ask you to pray for every pastor as we make decisions for the body, we make decisions according to God's standards. Lift up the pastors. Bless God for them. Thank God for them. These are tough times for pastors. So lift up your pastor. And if you don't have a pastor and you're listening to me now, I'm so glad to be your pastor. Inbox me and let me know that you want me to be your, your pastor. And I'll be glad to do that. Also, lift up the area churches that are lifting up Jesus. Lift up the kingdom of God, the saints of God. Lift them before God and ask God to bless them. Also lift up your enemies. Jesus says, pray for your enemies. Pray for your foes. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Bless them. Whatever you do, continue to bless those who are your enemies. And finally, on Sunday, this coming Sunday is the first Sunday, we will again be doing our virtual communion. Go out this week and prepare for your virtual communion. We'll be glad to have you with us to prepare and to partake in communion with us. Jesus says, as often as we do it, we show forth his death and his suffering until he comes again. Here at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, in I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. Thank you so much again for joining us. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you. We bless your name for you are our helper. You're the one that gives us mercy. You're the one that gives us commitment. You're the one who has already committed to us. And Lord, we thank you. We're grateful, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him, the only wise and only true God. 
Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us all say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, and God keep you is our prayer.